Hello everyone, Thomas Lancaster here and I want to show you how you can use the power of artificial intelligence to generate original images that you can use in talks or to support your other activities. Now, I want to say alongside this that AI, artificial intelligence technology now, is getting incredibly powerful. I have chosen to demonstrate to you a free tool there are other tools out there which generate higher resolution images that are paid for, but uh, this one will provide a lot of opportunities for you. It can also be misused. My research area is academic integrity, and I think about how uh, students in certain fields could misuse this power. Uh, even the ethical considerations about somebody using a system has been trained on thousands uh, well, hundreds of thousands of images, photographs, pieces of work by artists to generate these images. Uh, and you can see an example loaded up. So this is the, the Mindali implementation, the Caprell one there. Uh, it is not really the same as a commercial tool, Dali, the long story behind that one. But I'm just showing you this as an example. It's freely available in my case. I've had to log on to my GitHub account. It's been run 429,000 times. You can just register a free account if you don't have one. You can also uh, run it in your own, uh, I think it's Google Colab notebook. You can even download a local copy to run. But this is pretty fast, pretty powerful. So one thing I use quite often when I give a talk is I use bits of clip art. I like to illustrate my slides and this is a, an as live demo, it may or may not work perfectly, but bear with me. One thing that I quite often do is do things like have icons to show there's an idea or you should think about this. So let's try an idea clip art in there and uh, it is running just by pushing enter and it's going to demonstrate something for us. You can see it's being generated at the right hand side of the screen now. Unsurprisingly, it's been trained on existing clip art to do with ideas. So many of those are light bulb format. And indeed, this has generated lots of things that look like um, light bulbs. And you get by default, you get a grid size of five by five. And you notice just in a free implementation how fast that was. What did that take? 20 seconds or so. I lost track because I was still talking alongside that one. But all these images that I could take, let's just look at this um, this image here in detail and see, see what we get. We zoom in. The resolution is not really high, but we get images that could be used. 25 different choices of things that I could put very easily in a talk. And they're not, they're not all great. You'd have to do a bit of uh, cutting out the background Unfortunately, some of them don't quite show the whole screen there or the whole view because they're chopped at the top and bottom. That's because of how they've been produced. But uh, ones like this one towards the bottom right, edit out the background, that'd be quite a nice image, just to slot into a talk somewhere. And the other ones with an appropriate um, angling on the page or a background image, they're all quite nice. That light bulb moment, that idea, uh, let's um, let's see if we can go back the downside of trying to I suspect it's opened in a there we go let's close that let's go back to this minimal implementation here what else could we try uh, as an image you can type in nearly anything you might want here so let's say we wanted an image of London by a particular artist I'm Again, I'm going to try Quentin Blake. I grew up on a Roald Dahl books illustrated by Quentin Blake. Let's see what he would do with his 25 images. I uh, work in London, so I go off to have an image of London in talks. And I think you get very much a particular style of artistry coming through these illustrations, nice and colourful again. Let's just go in to the full size version. The, I mean, these to me are much more icon size rather than clip art size. So I'd probably use them in a slightly different way. But um, 
Uh, I mean, I can see bits of London coming through. You've got a bit of London, um, London Tower Bridge, perhaps coming through there. Probably, I guess, there's a bit of Big Ben, even though you've not got Big Ben and a bridge right next to each other in real life. But you get the impression of London coming through, and that's because of how artificial intelligence works. All the background images have been trained on about what London looks like. Uh, all the images about how Quentin Blake draws and illustrates there and the colour scheme used. And there are some things here which are really quite impressive. There are things you could do with this in terms of upscaling it using other software as well to go with it. So I'm going to say this is, this is very impressive. I can get better results. I'm willing to pay a few pence an image. It obviously lots of free clip art, free images out there, freely reusable you can use. But you're getting something that um, could be used in a talk, could even be considered quite deceptive, depending how you look at it. Imagine this being used in the world of art as inspiration, which quite often is considered acceptable for building up something else. So I hope this gives you an idea about the power of artificial intelligence, the kind of images you can generate. Just crop one of these. You've got something to work from. There, a bit of, I guess, Trafalgar Square there in the background. But imagine the power of putting clip art next to a particular phrase, putting an artist's name and seeing what you get, seeing how you can illustrate your talks and get something which is completely original, particularly if you use a tool like the uh, Mindali implementation I've shown you here that nobody else has access to where the images are not likely to be saved, especially running something on a local machine. And so nobody can say you have stolen this or you've misused or misappropriated work. So thank you for watching, Thomas Lancaster, and the challenge of academic integrity, the power of artificial intelligence, always one of the considerations that we have to work within as we prepare ourselves and our students for the future.